Welcome to the VMware uh, vCenter Site Recovery Manager 5 video installation and configuration series. My name is Andrew Elwood and I'm a senior technical instructor with VMware Education Services. This portion is actually the second of 10 modules that we're building for um, installing and configuring SRM. Uh, this is the actual installation module. This is the one where we're going to take a look at what the prerequisites are and how to go about installing SRM5 effectively. Uh, this module will include some uh, conceptual information as well as a demonstration on the installation process for the environment. So vCenter Server, first of all, when we go to deploy SRM5 inside our um, environment, a um, key requirement that you need to understand is that each individual site has to be capable of working completely independently. And what that means from a vSphere perspective is that each site needs its own vCenter server. So starting point number one is that you need to have two sites, you need to have two vCenter servers, uh, and they need to each be managing their own ESXi servers. Of course, you can have virtual machines running in both environments, as we talked about in the first version. Uh, but essentially, if we're looking at protected to recovery site, we're really concerned about those virtual machines in the protected site. So step one is we really do need that. To manage our SRM environment, we're going to use the vSphere client, just as you normally would to manage any other uh, vSphere environment. And then we're going to add to it the SRM plugin. And the plugin itself can manage either that local SRM site or it can manage the remote site from a single pane of glass. And that's an important new feature that we've brought forth with SRM5. We no longer require linked mode uh, between your vCenters to, in order to be able to manage both environments from a single login. Um, and to my way of thinking, that's, that makes life a little bit easier for people who are deploying this. Um, We'll see a little bit more of that when we go through the demonstrations. So there's a long laundry list of prerequisites, the first of which that's fairly important is we need to be running, um, the SRM server needs to be running a Windows 64-bit operating system. Um, all of the technical specifications are always published in the release notes that come with the actual product, and they're available on uh, www.vmware.com. Uh, we also have to have a database, and this database, in as much as vCenter requires a database, is a separate database from the vCenter one. Um, it can be running on the same server, the same database server that is, uh, but it needs to be a separate database instance, and the documentation is very clear about how to deploy that effectively. It's not a big database, but we definitely need one. And we also need to be able to have a network connectivity. Um, I know that maybe sounds a little bit obvious, but uh, your SRM server is going to interoperate with your vCenter server on a fairly regular basis to do things like, oh, I don't know, figure out which virtual machines you have on your protected site so that we can decide to protect them and fail them over. Uh, it is possible for you to install SRM on your vCenter server itself. Now, again, this is one of those problems, right? You need to think about uh, is having uh, the two of them on the same host a good utilization of resources, or is it one of those things where uh, that might actually cause you some stress because the um, uh, underlying infrastructure isn't capable of as, as much horsepower? Um, if you're deploying these things as virtual machines, it works very, very effectively to keep them on separate uh, Windows installations, um, separate, separate virtual machines in that case. Uh, so we can do either physical or virtual. Uh, we need to have uh, some link to our storage environment, and that will be dependent specifically on how your storage is set up, whether you're dealing with storage area network-based replication or whether you're dealing with the new vSphere replication uh, components. And we'll talk more about that in the replication componentry, as you saw in the outline. Um, and the idea is that um, if your workload on your current vCenter server is high, adding SRM to that is probably not the best choice. Um, and if you have a separate management cluster that you choose to run your management infrastructure with, then SRM belongs in that space as well. It also belongs on your management network, because um, predominantly it doesn't need to talk to end users. It needs to talk to your hosts and to your vCenter environment. The typical order of installation is as, as shown on the slide. We start by installing a vCenter server at the protected site and at the recovery site. Remember I said we need vCenter in both locations. Uh, we need to configure the vCenter server inventory. We'll show you that in the demonstration. Um, sometimes separation of the workloads into resource pools and virtual machine folders makes it much more straightforward to, to configure your failover so that all the right virtual machines fail over together. Uh, we then configure the SRM database and then finally install SRM on both sites. Well, I say finally, there's a couple of extra steps. Um, the, usually people are anxious to get to the install part. So now that we got that out of the way, 
you need to manage it. Therefore, you're going to deploy the plugin. And then finally, pair the two sites. And pairing the site says, uh, this site is going to be designated as the protected site, and that other site will be his recovery site. There has to be some sort of a network conversation there so that we can communicate back and forth between them. This demonstration is going to go through the process of installing SRM5 with the assumption that we've already deployed vCenter servers in both of our sites. Uh, we're going to show you the deployment of one of the SRM servers uh, in the upcoming demonstration. So here we are logging into the vSphere client. Uh, we're going to log into our uh, server that's about to become our SRM server. In this case, it actually happens to be a vCenter server as well. Uh, so SRM-Honeydew03. Um, log in as our, with administrative credentials. Uh, we're going to have a quick tour around the interface to show some of the architectural layout of the way we built the SRM inventory to support um, the configuration of SRM in a failover environment. All right, so here we are logged in. We're ready to roll, agree to the evaluation notice because we haven't got this one licensed. But uh, the architecture that you see on the left, the collection of resource pools, we've broken out local services from protected services. And inside the protected services areas where we store our virtual machines that we're planning on having set up to fail over. Local services would contain things like DHCP servers and, and firewall resources that we may not want to fail over. In much the same way, when we look at the virtual machines and templates view, we've got the same type of configuration. And notice that we've also got an SRM recovered services folder there, which is the intent to have uh, the other side of the SRM failover work in reverse direction. So as usual, it's a typical Windows installation routine. Simply launch the installer, uh, agree to the initial uh, dialogues, and let it go from there. So as with all typical Windows installations, uh, agree to what we're going to be doing. Click Next. Um, agree to all the traditional license agreements. And uh, once you've agreed to those, select your Next dialog box. And then we get to select our destination folder. So this dialog asks if you want to install the vSphere replication source components. And the answer that we'll select is yes, so that they're there and available for us. That doesn't mean that you're going to get vSphere replication. But what it does mean is that the source files or the OVF files to deploy the virtual appliances will be there. So at this point, we're being then prompted for the vCenter server that we're going to be uh, associating this SRM installation with. And it's important to use fully qualified domain names wherever you can in this environment. It's uh, infinitely more reliable. Uh, and then as you can see on screen, we're simply um, typing in the user ID and the appropriate password of an administrator level uh, user on that same vCenter server. Um, so we get the typical warning messages about security thumbprints on unsigned certificates. And we simply proceed with the installation. automatically generate a certificate for this particular instance, but you could use a, a traditional uh, signed PKCS uh, certificate. Here we're de uh, deploying the details of the certificate itself to create our self-signed automatically generated. Um, for ease of management, we're now prompting you for uh, a site name. And the site name being the, the, the name of the SRM site. So in a lot of cases, you would use this as your, the name of the data center, per, for instance, that you're protecting, or perhaps the name of the site. You are required to type in a valid email address format. It doesn't have to actually be a real email address, but it would probably be a good idea. Uh, and then from there on, we then go in and choose our database for uh, SRM. In this case, we're choosing a SQL Server-based database. We've already got the ODBC set up to uh, SRMDB. Um, and we're going to type in the uh, username and the appropriate password. Uh, of course, it's rather important to get the correct username typed in there, so we'll correct that mistake. There we go. Uh, and then subsequently, the appropriate password. And once that's done, we'll select Next. And now that we've filled in all the appropriate required information, we're going to simply click on Install. And we'll wait a few minutes for that to complete. So at this point, we have it completed. We simply select Finish. And the SRM installation is now complete. So next part would be to perhaps have a look. 
um, see what we can see in the back end. So we'll launch the vSphere client. We'll log back into our vCenter server. And we'll see what the results of that SRM installation were. Again, your typical administrative type username, whether that happens to be administrator or whoever was designated with administrator privileges in vCenter, uh, is the user account that's appropriate. We'll log in. So what you should recognize here is that there's really not a lot has changed. Um, the SRM installation looks the same. We haven't really done anything. So the way we get to see the SRM functionality is to install a plugin. So select plugins, manage plugins, and then at that point we can select the under the available plugins dialog box the download and install uh, routine. So here we get prompted for certificate warnings as usual when you go to install these. Uh, simply select ignore, let the installation proceed. That will extend the functionality of your vSphere client to give you additional capabilities uh, once the SRM installer has completed its uh, process. So in typical uh, installation fashion, we get to see the progress as it rolls through. Very brief process. Select next, agree to the patents, license terms, So it's important to note at this point, if you're going to be managing your SRM server from different uh, instances of the vSphere client, uh, perhaps you've got one on your laptop and one on your desktop system, or you manage one from a, uh, a system within the data center, it's important to deploy the plugin into each one of those environments. Uh, from that point, when we look back in the uh, vSphere client now, when you select home, you'll notice at the bottom of the page under solutions and applications, there was an SRM link there. And if we select that, we then get into the actual interface that we're going to spend most of our time working through in the rest of the demonstrations. So here we're looking at site three, uh, namely the local site. Uh, that would be the site that we just finished installing SRM on. We don't see any additional sites at this point in time, simply because we have not completed the site pairing process. And it's also interesting to note that you'll see the uh, um, kind of a menu list on the right-hand side under getting started of things you need to do. And that brings us to the end of that installation demonstration. Last but not least, that was a very high-level look at the deployment of SRM5. Uh, there is more detail to be had, and our VMware Education Services Group can help to provide that detail. Uh, we offer uh, the SRM5 Install, Configure, Manage training class, two-day in-classroom or live online environment. Uh, more details of that available on the website www.vmware.com education.